Greetings everyone and welcome to the uh, Painters Motivating Painters miniature review for the month of April. Uh, so our theme this month was single figure. I've got a, a lot of lovely entries for you here today. So without further ado, we're gonna crack on into it. So our first entry is from Robert Satness. Um, it's kind of hard to decide what's my best going with, he's got a Space Marine, Dark Angels, Black Templars, Black Templars guy. Uh, and he spent a lot of time with skin tones, just looking for general feedback. So I'll start off on here. Um, so yeah, I quite like this guy. He's got the very striking kind of color scheme going on. Uh, it's nice that you've uh, put in all these kind of various OSL effects all over it. That's very kind of adventurous uh, and good to be getting the, the practice in on them. Um, on that though, my first piece of feedback would be his base is really, really, really bright. Like he's in a desert. And he's got his plasma pistol is glowing, his, his little belt thing is glowing, his axe is glowing, but like, he kind of looks like he's in a dark environment because those things are all casting light onto him and because his armor is, is a dark color, whereas the base is kind of telling a different story that it's, it's like super well lit. So like actually the light bouncing off that sand would be stronger than the glow from his gun and it would completely eliminate it. Um, so, um... So your options there are you could either dark uh, or I'd probably do is just darken the base to give the whole thing kind of a dark ambience and then you could focus on your uh, your OSL like more it would just it would look a bit better basically. Uh, I like the dust on his feet from the base, that's great. Um on your just painting cleanliness, you got a little bit of your gold is overspilling from the trim of various places. So I know always annoying on space marines that they have, you know, black or whatever plates with gold on the edge of it. Um, so the trick there is, you know, it's just a matter of practice and then also to go back and just use your base color. So say, for example, on the shoulder pad, it's red and just paint back over the edges if you get any on there from the gold. And eventually, you know, you get the hang of it and it stops happening as much, but everyone has to do that anyway. Um, it's like coloring in back on it, either side of the line. And also the gold on his like Maltese cross things on his shoulder pads is a little bit, um, kind of patchy, I think you could do with an extra coat of it on there just to bring it up to its full uh, opacity because the red is showing through a little bit. Um, but he looks very good in general. I really like the kind of tabard and the, the, the black armor contrasting with it and like the little effects they've added in there. So fair play. You've definitely taken a, taken a, put a lot of uh, work into it. And um, thanks for submitting it to us to for review. Yeah, just a little note um, on the OSL. Uh, the one from the axe, I would say, was the most successful of all of them. Um, a couple of reasons for this. Uh, firstly, the uh, the cast light um, is kind of uh, a better tone as as opposed to the blue one. So if we look at the blue one from the gun, sorry, I'm just getting tangled up in my mouth. Um, Yes, it's darker and it's correctively darker, but it's a completely different tone of blue and it's it's too rich and, and saturated, so it doesn't really sell very well as a glow effect. Um, if there was some of that blue in the coils of the gun, it would be better, uh, but you can clearly see the difference between those two blues is, is too stark. Uh, and the same, well, similarly for the for the yellow lantern, it's it's the same light that's that's in the lantern itself. So obviously the lantern itself needs to be brighter, pr pretty much all the way up to white. Uh, in there uh, and there's no shadows that have really been cast as a result of those two the blue and the yellow osls that haven't really cast any shadows which obviously needs to happen but if we look at the uh, the one from the axe it's a much more subtle gradient uh, it's more desaturated in color uh, you've got shadows thrown underneath it um, so yeah the, this is this one is definitely working the best for you so um, take those take those microcosms there and just apply that to the others uh, and you'll be well on your way with her. So it is a tough thing to do, but great that you're trying it out this early on uh, in the painting process. So yeah, excited to see what else you come up with, Robert. Nice one. Cheers. Alex, did you want to add anything there? Uh, no, yeah. Um, my sort of... Uh, I agree with what you know, said already. My uh, sort of thing that I pick up on, um, you know, sort of into that uh, cleanliness thing is it looked in a few places like a paint could be just a little bit thinner um it could be that you said you um, you know the skin in his uh skin tone in his face sort of stands out as one of those places where it looks like there's some paint textures there um you know it could be that you know you said you've spent quite a while on the uh, skin tones um so it could just be you know you've 
been futzing with it, um, trying to get it to look right and build up maybe one too many layers. Um, but just, you know, a little bit more on that sort of cleanliness side. Um, you know, it's something that I talk about a lot and pick up on quite um, quickly when I look at models is how clean it's been painted. Um, you know, and we could just tidy things up a little bit, but it's all it's all small things. You know, things are more or less where they should be, where and when they should be. Um, so it is just those going back in and doing those little bits of tidying up um, to sort of make it that next step forward. All right, cool. Uh, let's move on then to Yusuf Mosinali. Uh, first time trying the multi ancient. Uh, the lighting effect. So this is like the uh, moonlight campfire effect he's going for here. And let's just take a minute to um, applaud the scale at which he's giving this a go, because uh, that is pretty damn tiny. Um, so I think on this one, the uh, this side is a great success, like the, the, camp, the campfire side. Uh, this is really nice. So it's a lot more prominent uh, the glow effect from where the source is apparently coming from. So that's selling really well. So further away down the cape and up on the uh, axe head and stuff and on this back shoulder pad, um, it's it's uh, less powerful than down here. So that's really good. And obviously the higher edges have, have gone up higher in colour. So that's really nice. The cape side, the moonlight side, um, is better on on here than than this side. I think the blue side for me is a little bit too too saturated. Uh, in terms of the blue. So uh, you probably want to grey this out a little bit. Um, you, you're right that it has to be blue, but I think this is just a little bit too blue. But where you've placed things, um, reflections and highlights and shadows and stuff is really, really good. Um, I just think you need to knock back the saturation for this. Um, so the, the you could do um, also, uh, what's the word, uh, incorporate the, the base colours of each material on him into the because it's all kind of it was black and you've you've kind of put blue all over it um but just to give it a little bit more uh life and character you could um actually differentiate these materials because he's obviously wearing some metals here and obviously this uh cloth tabard would have been a different color to what the metals are same with the boots so you could uh add a little of those um colors uh in with the gray blue mix um just to give it a little bit of differentiate uh just to differentiate it a little bit, uh, if you see what I mean, because I think it's just a little bit too, too samey. But uh, on the fire side, that it, it doesn't appear too apparent on that side. But uh, you could do the same thing over here as well. But but I think this side is actually selling pretty well the way it is. So um, yeah, nice one, Yusuf. Good good job. And again, at this scale, awesome. <laughs> really really good. So anyone else got additions there? Uh, yeah. So um, again, I was just going to pick up on that same uh, until you mentioned it. I was thinking the whole time trying to remember to mention about you know it does need those base tone colors of the materials um so it doesn't just look like something that's black and then with light on it um but the other one again when you're doing these sorts of strong uh sort of lighting effects where essentially the light is the piece um paying attention to the materials as well not just in terms of the color of them but also like on the that back shot where we can see the sort of the uh campfire type uh glow your, the cloak and the material and the metal uh, are both painted to be as brightly reflecting as each other. Um, whereas, you know, the cloak, even if it's quite a light fabric, won't be reflecting anywhere near as much light as the metal would be. Um, so just sort of paying attention, taking heed to the actual reflectivity of the materials themselves. Um, it's a little bit more of a sort of deep dive down into OSL. You know, um, a, lot of, a lot of the time, it's not something you, you think too much about with OSL, but when the whole piece is OSL and that's what you're, that's the only thing you're really sort of doing your painting with, um, those sorts of things need to really sort of be paid attention to, um, just to make sure that the effect sells as well as it can, um, because there's no hiding when everything is glow, you know? Cool. Yeah, I think um, of the whole piece, for me, the bit that sells the best is the belt buckle on the blue side. Um, like, obviously, it's not, like, all, it all looks good. But, like, that, you really captured the form of it and the material, the way it's it's got a bounce light, and you've got a, you know, one ring of it has that bright white, and then it goes to dark, and then it goes back up. So, 
whatever you did there, just do it everywhere. <laughs> Simple as that, right? <laughs> and it's tiny as well, so. I... Yeah, man. Right. Uh, Alex next then uh, with Courtney Marie. Uh, yeah, um, just saying that you know, looking for any insight on uh, something just feeling a little bit off, um, not sure where, maybe the skin tone. Um, yeah, for me, I don't necessarily think anything feels too off. Um, it, it all seems to fit quite well together. It's quite a nice sort of natural tone piece. Um, what, you know, I, I don't see anything that specifically says jump tower's not right uh, to me. Um, I think where you could be sort of getting this um, feeling that it's not right is where it's maybe what you're intending to go for and what you see in your sort of in your in your mind's eye it doesn't quite line up with how it's uh, sort of been realized and rendered on the piece and that's um, so that everyone struggles with um, I think it's uh, to an extent it's impossible to be a hundred percent happy with anything you do um, at least for me i don't know maybe other people actually like their work i, I tend not to be overly happy with it <laughs> um uh, a very self-critical person but i think you know i think this is really nice um you know i don't know the scale of the model it looks like it's probably a larger scale piece uh, so for that i'd normally expect to see a little bit more uh, variation in things like the skin tone um, that could be where again where another reason why it might not be quite feeling right to you um, you know, it could have a little bit more contrast and maybe some more sort of red tones and things in the shadows. Um, you know, uh, for what looks like an elf character to me, um, personally, I see that as a slightly more, a slightly paler, slightly more um, fantasy sort of skin tone um, with lots of reds in the shadows, though. Um, so I think that could be a place to push that a little bit further. But the actual, you know, tone of it, the color of it feels right and the... The way you've rendered those sort of volumes feels right. Um, it could just be pushing that just that little bit further. Um, you know, I think the green's really nice. It's got those lovely sort of um, uh, foresty kind of tones. I think works really, really well with the piece. Um, I just think in general, it you know it ties together quite cohesively um, and it's quite cleanly painted as well. Uh, so I don't know if anyone has anything else on that one. Um, I think I think you're pretty on it with the skin. Um... It does. I don't want to use the word flat, but um, there are some places where you definitely expect more highlights and more shadows to appear, like on the arms particularly. Um, it it does look a little bit um, like one color was used. Um, I know I know it's not like that. That there has been work done on it, but it, it just needs more. Like this is the shot that shows it the best. That that just looks like, you know, um, not enough variations happening there. Um, same within the face. So uh, some stuff's going on. Uh, with the eyes kind of like, like a shadowy type uh, makeup effect on the eyes but if you um, really were to add some more uh, reds around the uh, nose and the cheeks and some um, in the ears as well that really helps to bring to bring life to it blue around to shadow the eyes as well and sort of blue underneath in the neck as well because she's in seemingly a warm light and warm light casts cold shadows so you'd need um, I mean, Alex was right in saying some red in the shadows, but you could you could obviously combine that and go go purpley in the shadows. So um, yeah, that would be my my suggestion for the skin. Um, and then the gold, I think, looks really really good. You could probably go with some darker shadows uh, and separating it a little bit more. There's a lot to separate. I get that. So um, that that's not going to be uh, quick and easy because you wouldn't want to splash a wash on that because I think you spoil the work that you've done. Um, but this, the sword in particular, you can see that that could definitely benefit um, with, with some more uh, shading in it. Um, and same with the cape as well, really. A bit more texture uh, and highlights in the cape, I think, would, would really, really help. So, uh, yeah, there you go, Connie. Matt, did you want to say? Yeah, I just want to... Yeah, um, so, like everyone, like everyone said, it's a, it's a really good-looking piece. Like, there's like, nothing wrong with it. You always think that your work is worse than, you know, your, your, your own worst critic, generally. Um, but if I was thinking of something maybe that might have made it feel a little bit off to you is uh, this color of her skin and her kind of like her top part of her dress that's like cream and then her armor, like they're all a lot more similar than you would immediately think. Like if you were to take, like I took a swatch out of them all and the, the actual value of them is all in very, very close range. Mm. So even though they're different colors, they're not contrasting with each other, which tends to kind of you know, it, it might be just something that makes your eye kind of go, oh, is that? Like, I was looking at under her arm, you can see, I 
there's her armpit has a skin tone and then there's a dress but before that i could have thought maybe that was her skin tone that was in the uh, the top of her dress yeah exactly. um mm-hmm. but again you know it works as a piece anyway but if that might be what you were thinking of um and on the the gold and the armor it's got a lot of that annoying micro textury stuff where there's like runes and everything put into it which i hate uh because you're trying to get that to be reflective and things uh one trick that might you might want to try it is using an oil wash because that'll you can control very much how it seeps into all the recesses and then if you get too much on you can take it off pretty easily and it's what i always do and um, for those kind of filigreed metal where you don't really want to go in and actually paint every single little nook and cranny of it so that's something that you might like to try out in the future uh but the gems look great on it i have to say yeah the gems are cool most bud. Oh, okay, uh, let's move on then to uh, Jeffrey Strabel, Matt. Cool. So it's this like dwarf dude. Uh, I really like the color scheme with that, that two tone, like a um, lands connect guy where he's like blue and red, red and blue, super striking. Uh, it's kind of historical and fun as well. Um, I think the medals on his shield, uh, everything's painted quite tidily, which is great. Um, and the metal has a kind of uh, pitted kind of texture to it, which is um, normally not something you'd super want, but on like this boss of a shield, I think it's appropriate. Like bucklers often look like that. They're like a rough iron kind of material. Uh, but on his sword, you could probably smooth it out a bit. Like it's going to be polished. It's going to be sharpened. Uh, and you could have a brighter steel color uh, for like the edge uh, as opposed to the flat of the blade because at the moment it's looking kind of like it's all one piece it's not it's um you would not really see much of a difference between the cutting edge and the and the flat on it um his skin tone is also it's quite um uh, not very colorful and so for this kind of dwarf guy you know you could give him a, a red nose that would uh uh and cheeks that would uh, make him look a bit more alive uh, and just a bit more interesting with the like some light places or washes. You've got the eyes in there, so fair play, and the eyebrows as well. That's no mean feat. Um, uh, and on the base, you could maybe paint the materials that you have on there a bit. I'd say in scale, like I'm looking at it very close up, it probably stands out more. But there, it always stands out when there's something that's not painted, as opposed to things that are painted. So even just a simple wash or a, a light coating of some kind of acrylic paint on there. Um, because otherwise the kind of scale effect, you know, we can tell that's a real item that is, and we know what its real size is, as opposed to thinking of it as a, you know, a, a, a rock that's the size of his nose uh, in scale. Uh, but he's, he's a nice looking dwarf. Uh, I really love, like I said, what you did with the scheme as well. Cool. Yeah, I'd agree. Um... I'd also, uh, what you said about the skin was uh, particularly what stood out to me, um, that there's not a lot of life in the skin. Um, there's good variation in it um, and, and contrast. So that's all good. Um, so a little bit of smoothing, but adding some more of those life colours, uh, reds and pinks particularly, like I said. Um, yeah, that, that's what stood out to me the most. And then maybe pushing the hair uh, on the beard. So you want some shadows under his nose, uh, where his mouth would be, and then where the, the fabulous moustache folds come down. Um, some more shadows up in there as well um, to really help uh, sort of define the shape of the beard because it, it's kind of all muddled together. And I think that's more the sculpt than than how the paint is at the minute. But you, I think if you exaggerated the shadows, that would really help to to define those shapes and give it a little bit more uh, definition. So, uh, yeah, other than that, uh, nice one, Jeffrey. Alex, did you want to add anything? Uh, no, I think you pretty much covered everything there. Um, you know, I like, again, I'm just sort of hitting home on that sort of color scheme again. I think those sorts of really, where both colors are really, really bright, sort of quite saturated versions of themselves. It can be quite hard to pull off without it looking your face sort of punchy, um, but you've got it quite nicely balanced here. I think it works quite well. Um, and yeah, um, it is just that skin tone just stands out to me as the, it feels almost more like a Vidaccio sort of underpainting, not a skin tone itself. It's, it's just lacking that life. Um, but I think sort of that's already been covered quite extensively, so there's no need to sort of go on about it too much more. Um, but yeah, no, it's um, you know quite a nice little piece there. Okay, cool. We will move on then to Ian Farzan. Uh Appreciate tips about being cleaner. Okay, uh, with this cool uh, musketeer musketeer type dude. 
so uh, what do we like about this one? Um, I like the scheme. Um, I like I like the use of the yellow dotting that around and then including that in this blade. So um, that was a really really nice touch. Well done with that. Um, for cleanliness, um, the only thing that really stood out was where uh, you've got some edge highlights on the hat. So that looks a little bit uh, rough around there. So it looks like it may have been I'm trying to get up. Oh, I can make it bigger. Can I Let's zoom in a bit? Um, so it looks like you've kind of used um, downward strokes coming away in, in some places. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of made it a bit rough. So using um, glazing or a bit of light layering uh, to smooth that out will really help. Um, down on the free hand, um, there's some. It looks like you've you've tried to paint yellow over the black, uh, and it's not really covered particularly well. Um, so. Uh, painting yellow directly over black doesn't usually work very well because black is very rarely completely black. There's there's other tones in it, a lot of the time blue, so the yellow tends to green out a little bit. Um, so a good way to approach that would be to um, have this black, but then where the free hand is going to be, you'd um, paint uh, a completely different colour, and I believe the best undertone for yellow is actually pink, am I right? So you would have to sort of sketch this shape out in pink uh, and then go over it to get full coverage in the yellow, and then obviously black will go over, will go over anything. But then you've obviously got a bit of trepidation to kind of tidy up all the, all the black lines with yellow again. Um, so that would be my my tips for that. Um, the red's looking pretty good. Um, the white, I'd say, though, does need a little bit more shading. So um, like up here on the edge of this cloak, um, you'd expect to see a little bit more shadow at the top and maybe underneath as well here, where it's kind of turning in uh, toward the ground. So that would be nice. Um, nice colours on the face. I think you've done a pretty good job with the skin. Uh, just getting darker lines between the fingers would really help. Um, and again, yeah, I just want to point out again the um, the the NMM, you know, kind of sky earth effect, but then with further secondary reflections from the yellow. I think you've absolutely nailed that. It looks beautiful. You could maybe smooth it out a little bit more and adjust the volume sizes so they're not quite as uniform, but I, I think you you're mostly getting away with that. I think it's really, really good. Uh, and then the inside of the cape as well. See previous point about um, shading it. It does look a little bit um, monotone. But um, all in all, I think this is a pretty cool looking piece. Um, you've done a good job of the yellow on the arm here. Um, better than on the leg. So if you took that kind of shading uh, approach that you've done here to the uh, to the upper portions of the leg that would be a bit more shaded, uh, that would be uh, a, a few extra points there as well. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I'd say. Anyone else got something to add? Uh, yeah, just on cleanliness, um, something that stood out to me, and I know it's it, it's partly a um, Gale thing, but the eyes just feel it could be a little bit tidier up. Um, you know, the way that um, I don't paint this scale very often, um, but when I have in the past, what I sort of attempt with eyes is, actually, when I do the skin tones, I'll do it sh work from the shadow up, um, rather than sort of mid-tones and then working up and down um, to start the shadow colour. Um, and then you can paint your eyes in, tidy them up, and then you don't have to worry about messing them up afterwards. You know, you can get them that nice sort of small um, sort of eye colour. You can go as messy as you like and just tidy up with the shadow colour and then sort of layer up your highlights after that. Um, but no, that's sort of the, the thing that stood out to me is sort of in terms of cleanliness, uh, since you asked on that, sort of focusing on that sort of specifically. All right, cool. Moving on then. We will go to Alex for Sean Paul Creven. Uh Yeah, so uh, Zombicide Shield Maiden. Um, sort, of, uh, sort of just redoing the NMM a few times um, to get it to look real. Um, I think in general, uh, for the NMM, you've got it working quite nicely. Um, you've got the right sort of contrast there, so it doesn't look um, stony at all. It looks like metal, um, like ref a reflective material there. Um, and you've got the volumes rendered in, um, for the most part, the right ways. Um, the thing that stands out to me with that, though, is I'm a bit confused on where your light source is. Um, it's not overly sort of obvious to me. I think the reason for that is just because of what, the way the shield's being held up. You've got, it's quite a, it's a very round sort of, that rim shape is quite tricky to pull off. Um, and you're sort of, every single time you're jumping up to a highlight between a shadow, you're pretty much going from your maximum sort of near white or near white all the way down to your dark color, um, you know, your near black or, or true black there, uh, and sort of jumping between sort of white and black and white and black. 
um, which isn't quite how metals work. Uh, we sort of want that for that contrast, but you can jump between, you know, your highlight, then a mid-tone, then another highlight, and then down to your shadow and sort of play around with that. It's a little bit it's a little bit of a um, trial and error to get that artist sort of impression of metals um, rather than what metals actually are. Um, there's, I, you know, there's, there, there is, in theory, there's exact rules that will dictate how metals react to light, but they're so complex and there's so many sort of light sources everywhere. You know, you've got the sun, you've got light being reflected off the hair, light being reflected off the ground or off fabrics. There's so much light going everywhere. A person can't understand that, so that artistic interpretation of it um, is really what we're aiming for. Um, you know, something that really stands out to me as an area that sells it as metal really, really well is just behind our head where you've got that sort of reflection of the uh, hair colour in there. Um, I don't know if that's um, sort of intentional or if it's just, you know, it's very close to the hair and it's sort of a bit of bleed over in the paint. Um, if it's unintentional, you know, take it. Uh, if it is intentional, it looks really, really nice. Um, it looks as though it's meant to be intentional. Um, aside from the metals, I think in general, the painting's really nice and clean. Um, you've got the highlights in the right places uh, for the volumes, um, just sort of that top down look. Uh, on the uh, sort of highlights and again that just comes down to um, and again on the metals of where I don't quite see where the light source is because everything else is painted as though it's a top down sort of noon on a cloudy day sort of diffused zenithal light um, but the metals just don't quite always line up with that um, so that would be something that I'd focus on is just pick a very very defined light source and go from there um, but yeah, no, I like the skin tone, I like the uh, sort of hair tones, um, could be a little bit more reflective in the hair, um, but that's nitpicking, um, and I really like uh, sort of the blue fabric, it's, you know, you've got that nice uh, sort of desaturated highlight that makes it look almost sort of shiny, like a more satiny material, um, but yeah, no, it's a, a really nice piece there. Um, if anyone else has anything to add? I just want to ask, you only redid the metal five times? Only five? Wow, that's... <laughs> That's good. I do it like 10 or 20 times before I find something I like. So, yeah, <laughs> don't worry about that. Five times isn't a lot. Um, yeah, I agree with everything Alex said. Um, uh, I disagree, though, on the hair. I think the hair is, is looking pretty awesome, um, to be honest. I don't, I don't think that needs much more futzing on that, to be honest. But that's that's just that's just my opinion. I, I think the hair is one of the, the standout successes of this um, and, the, and the texture on the blue. Uh, clothing that she's wearing on the front I think worked better than on the back um, but obviously the lighting is a little bit different you can see it's more saturated in the rear picture than in the front picture um, but no good um, I think Alex has nailed everything else so yeah um, well done sure that's nice Matt did you want to say anything yeah I really like the uh, I think the Enderman the best place for me is the shield rim on the inside so in the front view where you've got this kind of like You've got a couple of points of light, but you've also got a bridging light that is like the edge of the edge going around. That's the most kind of um, yeah. It's selling the best. Um, the if you wanted reference pictures, uh, a good place I found for looking is symbols. Like symbols for drums are really shiny, and they are discs like this, uh, and you get this exact kind of pattern of like a kind of cross, and then there's secondary shadows, and you just imagine that. For your shield or circular saw blades you can just google images of those and that'll give you an idea of headline of a pattern based on a real life thing which is often the best way to do it all right cool moving on to uh oh who's this guy <laughs> matt your turn yeah something so recently completed abaddon would love to hear feedback on composition any other general struts and strengths of which is stretching the old enemy muscles how many times do you do it, Jim? Five? It's about it's about ninety hours, I think. This one. Wow. So a lot. Fair play. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then try to do the fire effect around way. Uh rather than stick to conventional methods. Okay, so um starting off on composition, I think it's pretty strong. He's got too much stuff going on for him, but I can totally read it, and I think you've done a good job of it. If you wanted the absolute try-hard points, um, what you sure. could do, what the way the model should probably be sculpted is, where the Bye, Alex. base marine helmet... We lost him. I'm sure he'll come back in a minute. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's saved back in a minute. Um, he was intimidated by your Abaddon, obviously. Um, 
But yeah, if you switched where the Space Marine helmet and the Gene Stealer helmet is, because you've got this really nice thing, like in the rear view, where the cape is blue and it's creating this half circle, and then you've got the Space Marine helmet, which would be kind of the opposite end of that, and then on the front view, um, there is the blue tabard, and then it'll be running through his face. I mean, it's not. It's, it's great that you've got the blue um, in both places, and I think that's working, but it's a shame that it's not actually sculpted the other way around. No, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I did struggle with that blue placement. I was, I was trying to create like a triangle, so I, I brought a lot of the blue into the, the sword to try and create that triangle around his head, but you're absolutely right. If, if, if those were swapped over, I just couldn't, I just couldn't take it. <laughs> Uh, take it off yeah. and, and swap them over if you know what I mean I, I didn't want to go that far yeah. Yeah, good point. and you've got a little bit of it in like that kind of bluish metal on the headdress and I think that's kind of like mostly doing it for you but it was a great shape to do it that way around um, and on composition wise the only thing that actually jumps out as maybe being a, uh, a point for improvement is I think his cape the inside of his cape on the front is a bit brighter than it should be because it's quite eye catching and it's not important if that makes sense mm. you've got the nice weathering at the bottom but then it's almost one of the brightest points in the front and it's well under his arm so it should kind of you know be in shadow or just be some other darker color like even if you don't even flip it around just have it all be a little bit less interesting i think that would help because it's such a big complicated piece that you need to prioritize yeah where we're looking at um and the blue part of the cape is is the important bit and the inside is just kind of there because it has to be there um, I think the NMM on the, the gauntlet is like super striking and really bold the way you've gone for this big sweep on one face of it and then black on the other. And it's also realistic, like metal often actually looks like that. You get planes that are just dark and it works extremely well in the frontal view. Uh, on the inside of his grip, I think it's not quite as strong, probably because you've got it coming from black and then it fades up to a gray, but then not back out. If you had the the point of light being more in the kind of the crook of his fingers there, that might be a, a bit of a better take on it. But again, it's a kind of personal opinion, really. Um, the sword I really like. Obviously, I've seen plenty of versions of this sword. Um, I love the way you've got the, the heated metal and then the mouths that are screaming are still heated from the inside. Like, that's class. Uh, and then the metal stand at the base, the way you've got the kind of vertigreed angel wingy thing. Uh, that looks great, and it's not too eye-catching. Uh, works really well. And you've got all the all the all the chaos trim. And uh, there's one bit of his gold on his right, left hand side pauldron, his extra pauldron that sticks up from his pauldron, uh, that I think is not it's a stud out to me that you've got like a highlight on the vertical part and the horizontal part, and there's no kind of dividing dark line in between them. Uh, and I think that would probably look a bit better, but like, you know, you've got all this gold trim to deal with. It's not it's not a big deal. Um mm. But was there anything else to talk about here? And yeah, like he's a great looking piece. Uh, uh, so fair play for putting in the effort to make him look as good as he is. He's very intimidating and you've really acquitted yourself well. Alex, do you have anything to, to add there? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Welcome back, by the way. Yeah, um, I was going to say my, my Wi-Fi dropped out half uh, just as you were starting that. So I don't actually know what you've said. So I don't know if I'd be repeating much, um, but um, in general, it's um, a really, really nice, uh, nice thing piece. Um, I mean, that's the long and the short of it. I think the um, focus is really nice. I think for me, um, there's a few things that I would, uh, but I'm not um, sure of on the composition. I think like that um, between the the back view it's fine for um because you've got that big blue cloak but um on the front view between the tabard um and the um sort of uh ultramarine sort of head up there it just creates that compositional line that doesn't quite um that sight line that goes just to the side of his face not to his face so it sort of feels a little bit off center a little bit off balanced um also i can see why you've chosen those colors it makes sense given the setting um, I, I can't really see a place where you'd otherwise balance that out. Um, so it's not a major thing. Um, and yeah, I think the metallics, um, non-metallics in a few places could just use with pushing that contrast a little bit more. Um, I think his, the tip of his sword just could go a bit brighter, um, or have, um, a bigger patch of where it is brighter, um, just to really, really sell that sort of 
big bright weapon. You know, um, I don't I don't know about much about Warhammer lore. I've said that more times than I can count at this point. Um, so I don't know if it's what it's meant to be. If it's meant to be some sort of specific material or whatever, but um, it looks as though you've tried to paint it to be metal. Um, and because it is such you know a character piece, I I would. Um, go really, really hard on that and make it look super reflective. Um, not quite to that sort of Kirill connive, like full on everything. You can see all the, the surrounding people in it reflective, but you know, a big, nice, bright patch of um, sort of pure white up there to really sell that. Um, and uh, but yeah, besides that, I think the gold comes out a little bit brassier than gold in places. Um, I it could do if, if you're going for, a, but that depends on what you're going for. Um, you know, you can go for that really big bright gold with some glazes of like um, you know, different sh shades of ochre and stuff after you've painted it all. Um, a a favourite of mine for those for this kind of tone of metal is uh, Scale 75 Peanut Butter. Um, yes. It's a yeah, really, really nice, nice really good colour for golds. Um, but if you're going for that slightly older, slightly more, not antique, but slightly more worn gold, um, you know, it, it hits on that for me. Um, but there's a few places where it feels... I can't quite tell if it's that you're going for, if it's for more a more bright gold you're going for. Um, yeah, no, it's a it's a really nice piece, you know. Um, well done. <laughs> yeah, and actually, before we move on, like I just wanted to was just looking through and noticed like the black on the armor is great, and it's like really hard to do, and like it's one of those things where no matter how hard you try, it's like looks like black armor. You know, it feels like it's not worth the effort, but it really is, especially the shoulder pad on the back. Like it looks really. Like, it's shiny black, which is super hard to pull off. And also on the composition, I think the way you've done the reds is actually really clever, and it's kind of subtle because the blue's kind of still on the show, but, but you got, like, this ring of red from his sword to his top head, top knot, to then he has red gems on his shoulder, and then his belt buckle, and then his handle of his sword, and then his head is in the middle. So I think that's one of the things that's uh, helping to kind of balance it out. Um, so... Don't know if that was intentional or not, but it, 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 it was. It was, yeah. A lot of a lot of that, as we said before, is because of that blue helmet up at the top. I've, I tried that in all sorts of colours, and that's the one that landed as being the least offensive. So, um, and just a note on the black. Yeah. Um, I was going for one side. So, if you look at him from one side, the black is actually reflecting purple, and if you look at him from the opposite side, it's reflecting green. Those are just kind of <laughs> opposing uh, interference colours. Um, just to give it, because obviously black is, is pretty goddamn boring on its own. So I stole that idea. I didn't come up with it. But uh, yeah, I, try, I tried to incorporate those here. But yeah, thanks for that, guys. Great job. Nice one. Cheers. Uh, right. So, oh, where have I gone? Oh, we, go. we, lost, the, we lost the place. Hang on. Just a second. That was no nice. worries. That was nice and smooth, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Da, 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 da. Scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. Right, okay, cool. Uh, so it's Jose's uh, post, but I think he's then put them in a little bit later, hasn't he? So, yeah, I think he had some problems with his pictures and he's posting them again later. So, um, Sergei Demchenko uh, with this Ram Druid thing, uh, asking for feedback on the skin fur and TMM, uh, which he's the most unhappy with. Any tips on making it more interesting? Uh, the TMM... Um, I'll, I'll go there first. First, actually, I'd like to say the composition is really cool. Um, the purple and the green, classic villain combination. Um, and done beautifully well on the skin. Uh, that's that's really, really nice, the way you've highlighted and shadowed that. Um, great contrast. Um, said it before, though, you may have gone down to your deepest no. shadow a little too often. So, um, example here would be on the shoulders, um, clearly shadowed and shaded. Um, and then the underneath of the arms is obviously very, very dark. So you've got the full uh, range of contrast here. But between the structures of the muscles, you didn't go down to five. You went down to like your three or four. Correct. It just looks like um, on the sort of abs and his kind of um, anterior serrator muscles underneath the, the pecs here on his ribs, kind of you've, you've gone a little bit too dark. It might be the photo. It looks like quite aggressive lighting. Um, but yeah, if you were to ease up on those shadows a little bit, I think that would be the only way really to improve the skin um, for me. Um, and the same goes on the back, kind of these lines between the deltoids, they've just gone they've just gone a little bit too dark. So you did it perfectly on the front, and then on the back you've just you've just taken the shadows a little bit too far. Um, but that'd be the only the only pushback on the skin really. Um, so the fur looks fine. It's tough to do. Um, it's never really sculpted particularly nicely. Um, so, um, 
it could be an idea to kind of break up the browns and and add some patterns in there um you know with grays and blacks um different sort of shades of browns i tend to paint it like a kind of a gray color and then bring the browns and the blacks and you know very very warm shades of white in and create an actual pattern to the fur that can make it more interesting rather than just brown and then trying to volumetrically highlight brown fur which is incredibly tough to do um so you can actually work some some patterns in there to to make it more visually interesting that's i find a much more effective way of, of doing it um, but the hair around the beard um, looks really, really great. I'd say that's got a nice sheen to it, um, and good contrast on that. So that works better than the fur because again, it's a smaller, it's a smaller area of the sculpt, and it's it's obviously sculpted more believably as hair than than the actual leg fur is. I'd say um, for the metals, uh, saying that he struggled with the TMM. Um, so on the gold, um, I think it looks, uh, I think it looks okay. It's it's got a little bit um it's very very yellow i don't know if this is a like out of the pot color but it looks like quite quite yellow metal so um you could add some uh some warmer browns to kind of uh, into the shadow areas like under his arms he's casting some shadow so you could exaggerate that um with some kind of warm uh, so like uh, what's this citadel one the doom ball brown is like a really nice option or you could even go really really light with some reds just to make the shadows a little bit more interesting um, and then up to a pure silver for the for the highlights of it because that just looks like the natural um, paint reflecting there. So you could take control of the highlights a little uh, there and exaggerate those with pure silver. Um, and then I'm presuming that is it looks like steel on the weapon as well. So uh, it hasn't really come out that great in the photos, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of hard to read where it's been painted as a highlight and where it hasn't. Um, but it kind of, if I'll do it based on these pictures, so it looks like there's just not enough highlighting on it. It does look very, very dark. Um, but like I say, it might just have been a bit unfortunate with the pictures. This one's a little bit better, but it just looks like it's 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 lacking taking the control and actually placing the highlights. It's it's actually the paint reflecting itself in the light, which is giving you the highlights. Um, so uh, yeah, I think I think that's that's pretty much what I got for this one. Anyone else got anything to add? Uh, yeah, just on the on the on those metals again. It's um, it like you say. It's just sort of shading it with that almost uh, non metallic stylings. Um, like uh, for the steel, for me um, on the weapon uh, is where it sort of is. It looks as though you've pretty much painted it with a dark metal color and then used a light metal for some edge highlights. Um, but you might get a better effect from painting it in a brighter color and then sort of using an actual matte black paint and then glazing in those sort of shadows or not a, like a pure black but like a, a dark a very dark color near black to sort of bring that in um you know a good uh example of sort of really really highly painted um sort of tmm in that sort of style in that same method more or less is uh Trevarian's video on painting his void dragon um, it's a really good one for these same sort of color tones as well, of quite a bright yellow metal and quite a dark sort of steely color. Because um, I think you, you say that they um, sort of stand out as the thing that feels the, the most lacking for you. Um, and, you know, it does, I'd, I'd agree with that, that, it feels like the part that doesn't, it doesn't feel as though you've taken the metals as far as you've taken the rest of the piece. Um, and that could just be a case of not being sure of how to work with TMM. Um, to that same level, um, it's something that I think a lot of people feel like there's a cap to how far you can take TMM. There isn't, but a lot of people feel like there is, um, and are a bit unsure of how to take it further. Um, and there's not as many resources on taking it further either. Um, so just sort of seeking that out and uh, getting, you know, pushing those just that little bit further will make the whole piece sort of feel that little bit more cohesive in terms of the standard. Um, but overall, it's, you know, it is a really, really nice piece. I, you know, I've got to agree that I think the skin tone's painted really well. Um, and I, I also really like that base as well. Um, I think it's a really nice sort of understated, but still, um, you know, uniform and sort of still fits. Um, my one comment on that would be it's quite bright compared to the colors of the model. Um, so maybe just having toned that down a bit um, might have made it feel a little bit more attached to the figure itself. But overall, they look, you know, really, really nice together. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on to uh, Jamie Foster then, Alex. Uh, yeah. So uh, just asking uh, on this little uh, little guy. 
um, and particularly on the background and whether it's adding something um, and just some general feedback. Um, so I think uh, painted backdrops uh, can cause a little bit of controversy among uh, sort of in the hobby. Some people are really, really into them. Some people are really, really not. Um, I'm kind of a give or take person. Uh, so I feel like that's quite a neutral <laughs> opinion to have. Um, so I think in this case, um, it works well. Um, you know, my thing with painted backdrops is always does it add to the piece. If it doesn't add to it, then it shouldn't be there. But this does add to it. You know, it, it makes a really nice sort of little uh, little scene. Um, it gives you that option to add the, that kind of ethereal sort of um, look to the background there. Um, that kind of, that you sometimes see sculpted of like um, figures with like energy sort of... Um, streams i guess for lack of a better word sort of around them and it, you try to paint that and it never looks right but having it like this around the background um in that sort of way that you might get in um like a, a cartoon or an anime or something of the characters about to do some cool shit with uh, sort of energy all around them it looks really well it, it works really successfully here um so yeah, good job on that i think in general the uh model is painted really really nicely um you know i think You've got that focus well, even with this this sort of slightly more desaturated palette. Um, it's really really cohesive. Um, you know, I think that base and the the sort of the colours on the rocks as well, keeping them not just grey. It's a thing that a lot of people can slip into, but you've done a really nice job there of making it look like it's got those environmental colours in there. Um, and uh, sort of the texturing as well across all the materials, they all feel different. Um, and look different, which is really, really nice there. Um, so overall, I think it's a really, really, really nice piece there. Um, so if anyone else has anything? Uh, totally agree. Uh, my opinion, backdrops, yes, they can work. And yes, this does work. Definitely adds to it. Uh, especially the, the green, the bright green on the back uh, in uh, reacting across the piece with the green that's on the rocks. It's a beautiful touch. Definitely works. Uh, it's great. If I had to be one... Uh, give you one picky thing it'd be this separation line between the fan and this right hand right here that could do with some tidying up uh, that was the only thing really that I could pick out uh, use of colors use of texture um, absolutely gorgeous so well done Jeremy great success Matt controversial opinion okay I think the backdrop works I think it's great I love the little butterflies I love the swirly energy thing Apart from, I don't think the green is adding to the backdrop or to the miniature because it's really saturated and really strong and it's drawing my eye in there, but I keep looking to the face of the model and then behind it, which is not what you want. Um, so I think you've got the kind of swirls. If they had a darker color behind the head of the model, then they would frame it in the same way, but with negative space, and that might be a, a stronger look to it and again it's one of those things you know it's is it adding or is it, it taken away i think the green makes the backdrop look better but i don't think it makes the model look better if that makes sense to you um even if you had the same that green tone but just not quite as neon and uh, an eye catching because it works really well as part of your ambient you know light scheme thing um which is great like especially you know it's taken throughout the whole model and the base looks great and it looks like a whole big scene um but yeah, I'd say, you know, you could take away that green and it would look as good or better, or if you just toned it back a little bit. Uh, and then one other little nitpicky thing, just in case you wanted one, I don't know if you do. Um, I really like how you deal with the metals reflecting like ambient lighting and how it kind of overtakes the gold here, like it was doing with your um, Dark Angels there last month. Um, but for me, it read like slightly weird in that on the right side of her, or it's crown thing, There's, it's reflecting the purple from the backdrop, but the backdrop's not physically there. It's like all of the air behind and in the area. So it was kind of like, if it's, why is it reflecting just there and not the whole crayon is purple kind of thing? It doesn't seem as, as strong a light source to be able to override the gold as completely as you've done it. But like, that's like a fraction of a millimeter of the model. And it, you know, it still looks good. So great work overall. Nice. Okay, moving on. Uh... So it'll be Andrew Jameson next. Matt. All right, let me just scroll in. I've, I've lost my place. Oh, what uh, kind of amateur does that? I mean, come on. I know. <laughs> I okay, so do this, that. Is the, this is the, the zombie dude, yeah? 
Yes. Andrew Jameson, struggling to get some contrasting textures. Any general feedback would be much appreciated. No, I didn't pay the back. No one looks. Anyway. Yeah, we do. Uh, yeah, we do. Uh, painted the tabletop standard. I think it used to be tabletop standard plus, and you edited it. But uh, maybe I'm misremembering that. Um, okay, so. And where to start? Okay, so contrast and textures. I think I really like the textures. I love how he's got this kind of gross, glossy skin to him. Um, and you've got lots of contrast. I think uh, your issue is that you brought the highlights very strong everywhere. So he's got like this green robe, but it looks like it's a glossy fabric and he's got glossy skin and he's got metal that is shiny. And, uh, you know, you're bringing the highlights up nearly to white everywhere. Um, so you've got contrast within each kind of material, but then all of the materials, like there's no contrast of texture, if that makes sense. Like nothing looks like it's rough. Everything looks fairly smooth and shiny. So if you had uh, some bits that were more, I mean, like the leather, is a little bit, but it's very small, and even you've got a brassy buckle there that's shiny as well. Um, I, I think it works as a gross, glossy, disgusting zombie dude. Um, but if you wanted to have more contrast in the fabrics, like his boots, like why are his boots so shiny if he's some undead monster dropping around the woods? So you can make those much rougher and scratchier and have a, a broader, uh, less strong highlight to them, and that'll give them a more rough kind of texture, like if you look at old boots that have been worn out, that's the way they look compared to ones that have been uh, newly polished. Uh, I'd say on tabletop painting, like the whole, you don't have to paint the back because no one's looking, that's more of a display thing, really. Like if you're sitting on a shelf forever, but if you use on a tabletop, people are going to be looking at the back of them as much as anywhere else or more. Like if you're, if he's in your army, you're pushing him around. Um, so I think, you know, you could at least put in, um, like, it doesn't have to be as interesting as the front, it doesn't have to be painted to the same standard, because not everything has to be painted to the same standard, but you could at least have the um, the base colours in there as opposed to the black, because it looks, then it'll look more like it's in shadow, or we're not meant to care about it, whereas at the moment, with just going straight to pure black, it looks like you didn't paint it. Um, which, again, would probably be fine for display, and I think he's actually a good-looking look model for display, uh, but for Tabletop standard doesn't necessarily just mean worse, it's a different set of criteria. Uh, and then similarly, his feet are both floating in midair. Um, so just get some stuff under there and, uh, and put it in to make him look like he's standing on the ground, because again, it's a tabletop model, so it should be walking around uh, in its environment. Uh, but I really, really like him, and uh, I think he's painted super well, so fair play. Anyone want to jump in there? No, I think you got it, old man. Cool. Juan Hidalgo would be proud. Uh, the style reminds me of Juan's. You know, the kind of the sketchy highlights. I think I think he did a nice job of um, replicating that. So yeah, nice one, nice one, Andrew. All right, uh, let's move on. Two, Joe Swenson. Uh, first real attempt at serious skin tones and the auburn hair. Also tried some more advanced TMM that I don't think worked on a lot of small details. Uh, input on the TNM and skins um, and overall is appreciated. Uh, kept making the lips worse. Okay, so we'll forgive you on the lips, which I don't think they look completely terrible. Um, so uh, with the skin then, um, it's kind of, um, they're nice colors. So you've got um, good undertones going on there. You know, there's the, there's some good pink in there and you've got some kind of blues up in the shadows. Uh, it looks pretty smooth for the most part. Um, it's just lacking a little bit of uh, volumetric highlighting. Uh, so if you look at the left thigh here from the back, um, the top is very, very similar to the bottom, uh, if not exactly the same. So just bringing some more shadows underneath the thigh. Um, and also with this front shin here, you can see the calf muscle here is identical to kind of the bottom of her foot. So um, just pushing uh, the shadows uh, around a little bit. These creases in the leg need to be super, super dark as well. That does look quite dark there, but I think that's more the light from the photo, um, if that makes sense, rather than actually painted detail. Um, but yeah, there's there's good colors in there. Um, so you just need to, the shadows are pretty decent on the back. Look, this ridge in her back and under her ribs here, you know, so you've got it, you've got it going on there, which is nice. And under this crease here, it's, it's looking good as well. So, you know, you could do it. It's there. It's just a case of um, uh, taking that out across the whole model. Uh, the the hair is um, lacking, I'd say, mostly in highlights. So you've got the shadows good on this. 
Um, it does look a little bit desaturated for Auburn though, so you, you might want to get some more um, kind of ready tones in there just to punch it up a little bit. It looks a bit desaturated. And then have some some sheen effect. So you need to come in there with some, some good highlight colors um, just to uh, uh, create that sheen effect that hair um, always has. Um, edge highlighting and weathering on the wood would be nice. Uh, sorry, the wood. Um, I should say the leather strap. Uh, the wood on the barrel I thought was actually quite good and grainy. Um, and then for the TMM, um, it's kind of like we said before, isn't it? So it's got kind of um, the metallic paint is going its own way with the reflections, but you haven't really um, taken control of where the highlights are so much. Uh, it looks like you so just spinning it around. So it looks like you've done it on the axe head here, but you can see like the, the opacity is a problem. And it has it hasn't really created those smooth transitions, and also where these highlights are doesn't it's it's not selling that shape being as metal. So um, it's kind of tricky to decide where you've painted the light from because she's in a very sort of general top down um, zenithal light. Uh, so if you were going to paint that the same way, you know these these I think the highlights probably in the right place. Shadows collecting towards the bottom, um, but you just haven't got the opacity there and it's not um it's not a smooth enough transition and there's no secondary reflections either so where light comes in and bounces off the steel rims um on the barrel uh you know it's not it's not creating any secondary reflections um and edge highlights as well you need edge highlights on everything um so yeah uh, edge highlights on the the bands the straps around the barrel as well um not not coming out so well the smaller details i think are, are probably working a bit better because what the smaller details generally tend to be they're mostly highlights, right? You need to have the deep shadows, you know, where there's clearly a recess or, you know, something covering it or it's faded away from the light. But generally, if it's if it's facing the light and it's metallic and it's small, it's going to be mostly highlights and, and midtones. Um, so I think those little details are, uh, are working a bit better. Um, so yeah, there you go, Joe. Anyone else got anything else? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, I think you've done a, a good job on the skin tone. It's always harder to do, like, ladies' skin tone because, you know, you need to get a good range of color but not have too much contrast because that makes them, you know, too, like, cut or whatever. Um, so, you know, this was a, a tough piece, and I think you've done it very well. And for the red auburn hair, again, it's always tricky. Um, you want to probably go for more orange brands of it to yellows. Um, rather than you look like you got kind of more just standard brands or, or like it looks like just brown hair. Um, and if you were to just highlight this up more, it'd look like glossier brown hair. So yeah, use more of the, the kind of like orange brands and uh, ochres actually work pretty well. Um, but it's one of the trickier colors to get right anyway. Um, and use reference, obviously, just look up people with red hair. And try and you can actually use like a program to get all the individual different colors uh, for a palette if you wanted to use that as reference as well. Cool. All right. Uh, moving on then. Alex uh, has got Biani St. Otto-san. I'm glad you attempted that, not me. Um, <laughs> so uh, I've got this one here with uh, just sort of generally looking for feedback on most of it, um, ignoring the uh, color shifts by um, what you're saying. It's, you say that that part was uh, mainly done to offend Vince and... Uh, just, uh, it is what it is. Um, I kind of side with Vince on this that color shift paints really not my thing. Um, so I'm not gonna um, sort of hark on those too much. Um, you know, I think that they're something that's really hard to do much with. Um, you can't really highlight them or shade them without sort of swallowing that color shift effect. Um, so uh, I'll just <laughs> let that let that sit as is, um, and maybe someone else will have a less. Uh, Strong opinion on them as 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 a product. Um, uh, looking at the rest of it, um, you know, it, for the most part, it's uh, you know nice and cleanly painted. Things that are meant to be the color that they are are what is that color. Um, there's not really much overspill. Um, I think your edge highlights uh, where you've got them, uh, particularly on the big sword, be a little bit cleaner. They're a bit chunky in places. Um, you know, it's it it looks like. It's it, the main one that sort of stands out as being quite chunky um, in those sort of other photos that you've got in the comments there is the that sort of ridge between that where that flats and where it goes down to the cutting edge there. Um, so, you know, those sorts of things where it's a very, very slight uh, change in the planes 
uh, it's not like a pronounced um, sort of corner that you can you know run the side of your brush down are very very hard to get neat um, but the trick there is doing it not worrying if it goes messy and then coming back and tidying up the colors around it um, you know so you can bring that those lines super super thin just by sort of shaving away the out the, the sides of them um, you know obviously the thinner you can get it with you know a nice sharp brush and possibly some flow improver or thinning with some ink there uh, helps but um, you know if it needs to be tidying up the sides makes that a much easier task and a less daunting one um, uh, other than that um, I think contrast could generally be improved a little bit um, we can push things a bit further um, you've got some shadows in there but I don't think they go deep enough um, you know this the skin tone feels very flat overall um, like I say you've got you've got shadow in there um, you can see it a little bit better in the I think it's the second photo in the um, that you've got down in there in the comments um, where you can see that you've definitely got that sort of shadow under the cheekbones and sort of under the muscle muscle groups and things, uh, particularly on the legs there. But, um, you know, it doesn't have that overall volume highlight of brighter in the face, a little bit less so in the chest, and a little bit less so in the legs, sort of that vignette sort of fade from the things that are closer to the light down to the things that are further from the light source. Um, so it just comes across as not quite as volumetric as it um, probably should be. Um, and again, as I say, just you've got, it feels as though you've got one tone and one shadow and then one small highlight in the really sharp details like the eyebrow ridge. Um, so rather than sort of having, you know, four or five plus levels of sort of shade and highlight there. Um, but that's um, something that's, you know, quite tricky to get used to um, and sort of really pushing that can feel quite uncomfortable at first until that starts being just what you do. Um, so it's not, you know, something that's too um, sort of detracting from the piece because it is, you know, nicely cleanly painted. Um, you know, I think where you've got the not color shift metallics, the sort of a brassy bronzy color uh, and all those little details looks nice. Um, and the gems, uh, they could be a little bit more uh, sort of gem painted. Uh, you've kind of got them as being um, their base tone and then a highlight of the sort of desaturated kind of purple sort of tone that you've got there just on the top, um, but that's not really how gems work. Uh, the light sort of enters them, and it doesn't really reflect off the top. It more highlights towards the bottom, where it's bouncing back off the bottom of the inside of the, the gem. Uh, so having that sort of um, arc at the top and down sort of almost in a C shape of uh, sort of highlight down to the bottom um, tends to be how gems sell the best uh, and how they, you know, they tend to act in general. Um, but, you know, the way you've got them, it sort of fits with the style, and it's, um, so it doesn't really detract too much, and they look almost more like they're meant to be a pearlescent purple. Uh, so you kind of get away with that, so it's not something that I'd worry uh, too much about. Um, but, yeah, no, overall, it's, um, you know, a nice sort of clean little piece there. So uh, if anyone has anything else to add? I think you know. Yeah, on the color shift thing, um, I would just say I wouldn't have done the hair in the color shift because it's already it's, there's already so much of it and then i kind of get what you're doing where the hair is blending into that thing but like it's already physically blending into it so i don't think you needed to and you know it's one of those things where less might have been more there because uh, like there's a bunch of i really like the bits where you can see the little gems floating around inside that storm and they look like you know they look like solid objects and it's like some weird other otherworldly thing but it just seems a bit odd that half the figure's hair is also that while still being obviously their hair. Or you could have maybe just started it transitioning into that then in the swirly thing as opposed to running up to the head. Cool. Yeah, I agree. Um I th I think colour shift things look cool, but used in moderation, I think it was just I think you just went a step or two too far with this one. Um but I, I like the effect that it's got. It's just there's so much of it there and i think it looks cool but i can't focus anywhere else as a result of that so the main actual mini for me is like the the lowest uh the lowest like interest like the least interesting thing here is what should be the most interesting thing so perhaps if you were you know really intent on using it using it on the figure itself like on the on the armor on the horns or something but then you would have had an awful lot more work to do <laughs> i appreciate that <laughs> making that storm look look as cool as it does now uh yeah so cool let's move on uh so it'll be uh matt next with robin hagblom 
Cool. It's us at the halfway mark. So, and our first vampire hanging on the pillar. Mm. Um, cool. Yeah, I've really enjoyed uh, watching this progress. Um, getting that moonlight effect um, on it. I think what really sells it is the candle down the corner because one of these things is just like with moonlight, you can't accurately rendition something as if it's in moonlight because in moonlight you can't see anything very well. So you can't paint your mini to look like it's hard to see. Um, so you end up kind of using particular colors and using particular kind of gradients and things, but then having a candle there that we can see the candle is casting this warm light that tells us, oh, it's really dark. And this is, you know, directional moonlight. That's why it's this color and that's why everything. So yeah, I think that works really well. Uh, I, and good job with the candle flame, I believe is made of hot glue or something, but uh, it looks great. And the drop off is, is quite accurate as well, because often people do things like candles and they have them too wide an area, whereas candles are actually really weak sources of light. Um, on the uh, NMM, uh, I think the sword is working well. I think the gold is fine. You know, you could talk about, oh, should it be colder or not? You're like, whatever. It's like it has to read as gold anyway. Um, so it's kind of a, an abstraction. I'm happy with it. Like, why does it even have a brass handle? Swords generally had steel handles. Uh, unless, well, depending on the time period. But this kind of sword probably would have been steel anyway, but the gold makes it look better. Um, I'm not sure. There's a couple of little bits where um, like, it looks quite well in general on the armor, but there's a few places, like his right shoulder looks fabulous uh, on the back, but on the front, I'm not sure why you have this little tiny pinprick of candlelight in it, like as if it's reflecting a candle off somewhere in front of him, but I don't think that's kind of, it's not really adding anything. Um, and then the rivets on the gold, there's a few places you have them like in a shadow, but it should be like a microcosm of the whole surface it's on. So if there's like a, if there's a you know, a highlight that is like 80% brightest on the gold, and then there's a rivet, that rivet has to have a dot on it that is as light as that because it's sticking up uh, and it should be as well lit, even though it's very small. And then on the back of his breastplate, the way you place the highlights, they're on um, kind of up near the shoulder. They're very up towards the light, which makes sense uh, in terms of directional lighting. Uh, but on this kind of surface, it probably actually wouldn't be like that. If you look at breastplates, they tend to have um, like annular highlights. They'd be like stripped down because it's like a concave mirror. It wouldn't be lit more uh, like along the edge that's facing upwards necessarily. Or if it was, it'd be like um, it didn't have its own shape to it. I see why I've done that because there's that awkward metal like gold thing that's, that would be cutting where the highlight would be in half. Um, so it's fine for like for a model that looks like my that looks rough ground, but if you were um, wanting to do a, a more realistic uh, effect, it, you'd have to kind of deal with the fact that your highlight is running down the, the cylinder of the torso and being broken up by that uh, bit of filigree that's been sculpted on there. Uh, but I think it looks great overall. I really like it, and like it's not an easy uh, topic to tackle um, to have this. Um, uh, moonlit vampire with the, the NMM uh, going on. And on the fur, I think it's fine because you said you tried to add a bit of a sheen to it, but like it's draggle the old fur. And so you probably don't want it to be all glossy and it's not very uh, important to the piece. Um, so I think it's fine to just leave it as a relatively like it's picked out. We can see that there's fur there and uh, then we ignore it because there is more important things that we need to look at, like the face and the sword and things, and that's the way to do it. So, good job. Okay, cool. Uh, so, moving on then to John Patrick Miller again, um, with a Siren of Ecstasy uh, from Creature Caster. Uh, I was going for playing out the end of the world vibe, not sure it's landed as he's kind of described a uh, beach vacation. <laughs> So um, general feedback would be nice. Uh, yeah, so looking through the pickies then, um, looks like it would have been kind of a tricky job to paint as the sculpt is a bit soft um, around the finer details, like the eyes, um, deep recesses like fingers and the hair. So, um, and there's also looks like some unwanted, unwanted textures kind of here and there. Um, so uh, what kind of stood out to me was um, general contrast in the skin and separation. So it's 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 looking like the the shadows aren't really going as as far as they uh, uh, need to. 
um, in places like under a neck and then under a chest and under a leg. It's deeper under the leg, but that kind of, um, I think, is, was also a play on the light. So there are some elements where you've separated, like around these uh, got anklets and stuff that have gone darker, but it's it's I don't think that's quite dark enough. So in the scale of one to five, you're kind of residing mostly like between um, sort of two to four. So you're missing like the extreme highlights, um, volumetric and and obviously in value as well. So they're not quite going high enough in enough places, if that makes sense on the skin. Um, but um, that being said, um, the wood effect on the loot looks really, really good. Um, I do like that a lot. Um, I just think that the strings could have been picked out to really finish that off. That would have been nice. Um, so like a like a really really bright ivory color. Um, maybe mix a little bit of white in to push it a little bit more. But uh, yeah, those those strings look like they could could use a bit of love. Um, and the weathered banner and the variety on the rock base. Um, I really really enjoyed those. So the rock for me is probably um, the best looking thing to be honest, on the whole piece. That's really, really cool. The banner, um, nice and weathered and stuff. I just a little bit more kind of separation. Um, it, it needs a little bit uh, more more darkness to some of the to the weathering, I think. Um, I think it's been quite tastefully done. So it's obviously very weathered. It's been there a very long time. But um, as that happens, the weathering, you know, things would dry on and kind of bake on or become more deeply stained and then other stuff would be on it would be newer so that would kind of be um you know a little bit lighter and more pastel in color so i think just varying some of the the browns on the weathering would be a nice way to go um uh yeah that's that's what i'd say patrick anyone else got anything to add uh yes just on, just on that uh banner weathering and things still um to me it doesn't read as the banner um it looks more like um sort of rust on a metal um, I think that's just it, it. To me, it just doesn't look dusty enough. Um, something like a, a banner to me should, you know, that that kind of weathering is dirt that's on it. Um, you know, it's not things flaking away and peeling off of, uh, you know, a surface. So just sort of bring in some more of that, um, you know, something, some pigment powders or something to make it look a bit more dusty, um, as if it's you know actual dirt on there. Um, and also just you know if it's something that's been there for so long that it is that damaged and it's sort of that end of the world kind of vibe um you know just largely through to through um you know the way that it's portrayed in you know tv shows and um you know films and things end of the world a lot of people associate that with uh, sort of washed out kind of sun bleach type colors um so i probably would have you know tried to make that um you know those colors on there a little bit more um, at the very least if not the fabric the sort of iconography on there a little bit more uh, sort of washed out a bit more sort of some whites in there some tinting it out uh, just to make it look as if it were sun bleach if it's been there for you know however long it, it may well have been to accumulate that much dirt on it um, but overall i think it's you know it's a nice piece and i think it does you know i don't think it hits beach vacation i think it, it does you know get that sort of end of the world vibe quite well yeah i really like the uh, the gold and the shoulder pad which is like a couple of different pieces and they're very small i don't know these creature caster models can have very small details and you've done a really good job picking that out um, I was just thinking, I was looking at it, um, like uh, Alex said, like it does hit the vibe, but you like knowing what it is, but maybe it's a bit too subtle. Like if you had something really overt to show the sinisterness, like obviously she's creepy as all get out, but you've then done her up to be like, you know, you're, you're playing into that. She's like meant to be adorable or whatever. Um, so you need something to show like this is hell on earth is happening. So if like the statue under her was like crying blood and that was dripping down through all the rooms and then slipping off, that would kind of tell you that she's having a good time, but no one else is. And I think that you just need something that's that's more on the nose, just so that everyone gets the impression straight off the bat, um, even if maybe it's not exactly what was in your vision. But it's a cool looking model, definitely. I like those hands that are sculpted on the base. Right, okay, cool. I think we're going to call it there for part one, right? Great. And we'll see you for part two. All righty.